20 minutes past the hour. Welcome back into Morning Rush. As Tornado Week continues, let's start with one of those tornado sayings that is in reality fiction. You can always see a tornado coming. Well, the truth is, tornadoes can be difficult to see sometimes because the rotating winds can wrap heavy rain around them, and that blocks the view. Trees and hills can also obscure your view of them. Now, for tornadoes to form, all of the right ingredients must come together. Our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, has a fascinating look at the recipe in the science behind tornadoes. Tornadoes are rapidly rotating columns of air that form from thunderstorms. Those thunderstorms form on days with very warm, moist air at low levels that rises. It's unstable. It rises rapidly. We call those rising motions updrafts. And there's an inflow of air that comes in and then rises vertically. Now, the whole thunderstorm itself will rotate. Those rotating thunderstorms we call supercell thunderstorms when there's a shifting of the wind in the inflow layer. Safe with surface winds from the southeast, winds aloft from the southwest, so that the whole layer will begin to have a rolling motion, like a log rolling down the street. As that layer then is directed northward and gets entered into the base of the thunderstorm, that updraft catches one end of the roll and tilts it into the vertical. And that then gives the counterclockwise rotation of the parent thunderstorm. We call that a supercell. Those thunderstorms, once they start to rotate, have a little bit lowered pressure. A wall cloud, a layer like a layer cake, comes down beneath the prevailing cloud base and marks the location of where that rotating inflow is coming into the thunderstorm. The tornado then forms from a second stage. Once the storm is rotating aloft, a rain-cooled downdraft, that we call a rear flank downdraft, comes in from the south and west side of the wall cloud and brings in some west wind that clashes with that southeast inflow, creates a localized spin layer, and that's where the tornado forms beneath that wall cloud. So that's the process by which the thunderstorm rotates and then spins up a tornado. That is fascinating, Dr. Forbes. Thank you so much. Of course, all week long is Tornado Week, and you can go to weather.com slash Tornado Week, and that'll give you uh, some pretty interesting stuff to peruse, including uh, the live stream to our Tornado Room, and already seeing some tweets here of folks asking where the interns are, because if you use the hashtag Tornado Week, we increase the speed of the fans in the room. So definitely check it out right there at weather.com. And we're taking a live look right now. There are the interns, hard at work. There you go, and they, they respond to you, uh, Reynolds. It's really interesting. There's a good feedback uh, with the live tweets and the folks that are in that room. It's pretty interesting stuff. Absolutely. All right, well, good times for them, and let's hope that uh, your seven-day forecast is not going to include anything that's uh, going to be too tumultuous, especially in terms of the tornadoes. But I'll tell you today, we're going to have the threat of flooding across parts of the Gulf Coast. I want you to notice something. As we put this into motion, you're going to see a lot of this rain basically locked in place over the next several days. Also, that mild air in the eastern third of the country, very warm in the desert southwest 95 in Phoenix and then tomorrow again just as advertised we're going to see that rainfall from the Gulf Coast clear down to the central and western Great Lakes and there it's going to stay locked in place tomorrow and then even to Saturday we see the focus the rain from that upper level low move over Florida but still the rain continues for parts of the Ohio Valley the central and western Great Lakes again stuck in that kind of pattern. We're going to also have that still very warm air over the desert southwest where Phoenix expected to rise to about 96 degrees, a bit cooler up towards Flagstaff, Yuma, Arizona, certainly in the triple digits. And then by Sunday, still seeing the showers over portions of the Ohio Valley, 67 in Washington, D.C., some 60s in Boston, New York, 75 in Albuquerque, 65 in, New in San Francisco. And notice this low moving over portions of the Great Basin will bring some of those high base showers, maybe a thunderstorm here there, but still the heavy rain continues for parts of the mid-Atlantic, even on Tuesday with 81 degrees in Orlando, 69 in Chicago, 67 in Minneapolis. More rain for you for you from, say, Minneapolis to Kansas City. Not bad seeing some of that rainfall over places that are desperate for it. And then we wrap it all up, taking a look at your Thursday, and Thursday's going to be fantastic, too. All right, let's send it back over to you. I notice no snow. No snow. No. That's important. All right, much more ahead on Morning Rush. Speaking of snow, live look at Rochester, Minnesota, where winter storm slash spring storm Achilles has dumped more than seven inches.